Um, all right, so with this forecast, which you've been talking about for several days now, we've been getting some emails from viewers saying, OK, can my heat pump handle this? Mm. This is some of the coldest air we've seen in a long time. Yeah, and it's a good question. And the answer is it depends. It depends on two things, whether or not you have a certain type of heat pump and also what your location is going to be. So um, I don't know if we have the, the graph here that I want to show you, but th this is I'm not, it's not an advertisement for Mitsubishi, just so we're clear, but they make one of the uh, best cold weather heat pumps by stats, as does Fujitsu. So those are the two. Now look at that line, the red line. What you're looking at is decreasing temperature from right to left. So at the left, you get down to 13 degrees below zero outside. And at that point, this heat pump can put out 73% of its rated BTU capacity. So if you've got you know, a 30,000 BTU compressor outside, you'll get 73% of that heating when it gets to 13 degrees below zero. Notice that they have a standard heat pump. The older models of heat pump are not as good at these cold temperatures. In fact, they lose a lot of heating capacity when they even get down to around 10 degrees or so. So it depends on, do you have a newer one? Do you have one that's designed for super cold conditions? But it's not just about, can it provide the heat, guys? It's about, is it a good economical choice if you have a backup? So let's go to the next graphic, and we're going to talk about something called COP, which is coefficient of performance. Basically, that means how much heat are you getting per kilowatt? So uh, COP of 3 means you're getting 3 kilowatts of heating for 1 kilowatt of electricity usage, if you're following me. So that would also be considered 300% efficient. So heat pumps are great in those fringe temperatures, especially 30, 40 degrees, they can get almost 400% efficiency. But you'll notice on the bottom there, when we get down to five below, we're down to two, 2.2, two flat efficiency, and making it all the way down to one, which is 100% efficient, which sounds great, <laughs> but 100% efficient is actually the same as using a space heater. So those, as you know, if you've run those, are very expensive to run. So you may be able to get heat out of your system, but it will get very expensive on these fringes when it gets below zero. Last but not least, if you're interested in a heat pump system, and if you do have an air handler, a lot of them install what you're looking at right here, which is an auxiliary heating strip. So if the heat pump is unable to keep up, it will just kick in and use that. So all of this to say that there are limits to this. And so if you're in a spot that's 25 below for 12 hours, and you're getting, say, 60% of your heating, that could be a problem for you, and you might not be able to at least maintain your set point. Um, so that's something that you hopefully size a unit for. Along the coast, typically, this works out, but a lot of places have backups in other zones. And could it be an expensive weekend it for could you be. if you're running that? If you've got solely. another version, this is definitely that time where you would want to change we'll over for a couple of days. Just yeah. don't forget to change it back, because when it's 40, then your propane boiler right. efficiency is so bad compared to that. Yeah. Yeah. Really interesting stuff. Mm, All right, Keith, thanks. thank you.